Hello my fellow working class heroes, good day. I am Carlo and welcome to Carlo Excels. These are the objectives of this episode. Today we're gonna talk about the text to columns feature in Microsoft Excel. First we're gonna define it and then we're gonna use text to columns for delimiters and then use text to columns using widths and then we're gonna talk about the practical applications of text to columns. First of all, what is the text to columns feature of Microsoft Excel? What you can see on the screen right now is from Microsoft Excel's own help document. Use the convert to text columns wizard to separate simple cell content such as first names and last names into different columns. Depending on the way your data is arranged, you can split the cell content based on a delimiter such as a space or a character such as a comma, a period, or a semicolon, or you can split it based on a specific column break location within your data. So how do you access the text to columns feature of Microsoft Excel? So if you can see my screen right now, uh, you will see, of course, uh, we have our main screen here and then you have here our ribbon. On our ribbon, please go to the data tab. As you can see on the screen, data tab. And in the data tab, you will find the text to columns button. If you, text, if you press the text to columns button, you will then be uh, led to the text to columns dialog box. And this is where we can use text to columns. But before we use text to columns, let's first uh, examine our data. Looking at the first three rows here, you will see here uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So you have two letters uh, separated by spaces, but all of that is just in one cell. In the next line, you have K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T. Again, paired uh, letters, but all of that is just one cell. And then you have U, B, W, X, uh, Y, Z, all in one cell. So let's say, for example, that you want to split uh, these date this data by their spaces so in other words you want to split a b with c d with e f with g h and with i j so in other words you want a b here on this cell c d on this cell e f on this cell g h on this cell and then i j on this cell in other words data that is just in one cell you want to split into many cells that is what the text to columns is for so let's try that so let's click on this cell here and just like what i mentioned a while ago you go to the data tab and then you press the text to columns button here now you will be asked uh, the text wizard has determined that your data is fixed with if this is correct choose next etc so it is asking you what uh what is uh, what is the delimiter or uh, what separates the data between each other? In our case, the, the, the thing that separates the data is a space. That is a delimiter. It is a character that is purposefully put to split the data. So we choose delimited because a character separates each field. Then we press next. So let's click on next. And then uh, Microsoft Excel is asking you, what is the delimiter that you are using? By default, tab is uh, checked, but we're not using a tab here in this case. We are using a space here. So you will notice uh, on the data preview here, the moment you press on space, you will notice that Microsoft Excel has now separated A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I, J exactly what we want uh, because we chose space as a delimiter. And then when we press, press next, this is what we get. Now on this dialog box, you were, you're going to be asked, uh, how do you want to format uh, each and every uh, column? So for example, uh, in this column, do you want it to be on the general format? Or do you want it text format? Or do you want it date format? In most cases, it's very safe to simply just use the, the general format for all of those columns. Unless, of course, you want to use the text format in some of those columns. But in this case, we're just going to use the general format. So once you have uh once you think you have what you need in this preview next let's set the destination so the destination by default the destination will be uh simply to overwrite it will simply overwrite the original uh, source of the data but you can choose another destination so say for example i'm gonna highlight this and i'm going to delete it with the delete button on your keyboard and then let's press uh, let's press on this box here so we can choose a destination. So say for example, I want the columns to start here. So let's press on that cell and then press enter. So you'll see here the destination is $B$1. So when we press finish, 
this is the data that we have now. So my dear viewers, this is what I meant when I said that you split uh, the data from one from, from the data being in just one cell, you now split the data to be on different cells. Because the data in the single cell is separated by a space, this space is what we consider as the delimiter, and it was used as the basis to split the cells. Of course, there are cases wherein uh, you do not want or you do not like the result of uh, text to columns and you feel like you made a mistake. So all you have to do, if you do not like the result of the text to columns wizard, all you have to do is to undo. Uh, the, basics, the basic for undo is control Z. So if you press control Z, of course, you remove the results of text to columns and you can start from scratch if in case you made a mistake in the settings. Next up, you will notice that a while ago, I used a single cell and then I split it into many columns. So some of you may be wondering, does that mean for each and every cell, you're going to have to uh, do the exact same wizard? Actually, no. You can highlight uh, multiple cells for as long as they're on the same column. You can highlight multiple cells and run them through the exact uh, same text to column setting. So we're going to do that. So in this case, let's try um, putting these three rows uh, through text to column. So let's highlight these rows like so. And then once again, data tab, and then on the ribbon, press the text to columns button like so. And once again, on this dialog box, we do not want a, want a fixed width. We want uh, the data to be delimited because the data is delimited. In other words, the, 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 the thing that separates the data is a character, in this case, a space. So you want delimited and let, then let's press next. So in this case, what is uh, limiting our data, what is separating our data is a space. So we press on space as a delimiter and then we press next. And then let us put the destination as this over here, B1. And then we press finish. So after we press finish, you will now have uh, these uh, this column of uh, this column of data over here has now been converted into multiple columns and the text has been splitted based on where the space is because the space is what we set as our delimiter next is uh, is space the only possible delimiter actually no there are many uh, possible kinds of delimiters now in this next row here you will see that the delimiter in this case is a comma so the comma is what separates the pieces of data that we need to separate so let's run this through let's run through this uh, whole column through text to columns again so once again we highlight these cells press on the data tab and then go to text to columns press that and all, once again we want delimited press next and this time instead of a space being our delimiter we want the comma to be our delimiter and you will see on the data preview that is uh, what microsoft excel thinks about your choice comma so that is how microsoft excel has now uh, separated the data press next again and once again, you can choose a destination. Let's take away that. And then let's choose our destination to be on this cell. Press enter. And then click on the finish button. So when we click on the finish button, once again, you will now see that the data has been split from one column into many columns using the comma as a basis for the splitting of the data. In some cases, the data is uh, split by multiple delimiters. So you have here on this uh, third set of data right here, um, the data is set by not only a space, but not, not only by a comma, but both a comma and a space. So can text to columns handle that? Yes, it can. So once again, let's highlight this column of uh, data here. And then once again, on the data tab, we press on the text to columns uh, button. And then once again, we need it delimited, press next. So this time, instead of simply uh, highlighting space or simply highlighting comma, we want both the space and the comma because both the space and the comma is are our delimiters in this case. So we press next. Once again, we select our destination to be the cell uh, right after over here. And then we press finish. So once again, we have separated our data into many columns using both a comma and a space as delimiters, as basis for uh, the splitting of data. For the next feature of text to columns, let's try not using delimiters. Let's try using fixed width. 
on the screen right now, you will see samples of uh, gibberish data, but each and every cell there has uh, exactly nine characters each. So you have one to nine, and then the first nine letters, and then nine to one, and then the next nine letters, etc. Uh, these are all, uh, all of these cells have nine characters each. So say, for example, you want to split these into uh, two columns. One of the columns has four characters and the other column has five characters. The text to columns function or the text to columns feature rather can do that. So let's try that. Um, let's once again, we highlight all of these cells and then on the data tab, as you can see on the screen, on the data tab, we then go to the text to columns button. This time, instead of using the delimited uh, file type, we use the fixed width because there is a fixed position on the text that we want to split the columns into. So uh, we press next. Now it says there on the instructions, this screen lets you uh, set field widths or column breaks. Lines with arrows signify a column break. To create a break line, click at the desired position. To delete a break line, double click on the line and to move a break line, click and drag it. So let's try that. If you click on any of these, uh, you know, uh, lines on this small ruler here, you will create a break line. You can move it by clicking on it and dragging it like so, or you can double click it to remove it like so. The break line that we are creating in this case is what Microsoft Excel is going to use as a basis for how it is going to split the data. So this is what fixed width looks like. So in this case, as I mentioned a while ago, the first column has four characters and the second column has five characters. So we want to split it this way. So we want the break line to be between the fourth and the fifth uh, columns or fourth or the fifth character so that we create a column with four characters and then we create another column with five characters. Once we're happy with what uh, we chosen, we press next. Now on the next dialog box, uh, once again, we can set the data, uh, the, the, for, the data format of each and every column, and then we can also set the destination. So say for example, we just want the general format for those uh, two columns, and then we want the destination to not be on $A$1, but rather on $P$1. So that is where we click, and then press enter, and then we press finish. So once we press finish, you will now notice that, uh, let me align this so it's easier to see, like so. You will notice ju that just like what we asked for a while ago, we want the first column to have four characters and then we want the next column to have five characters. That is what fixed with text to columns can do. Now for this next example, let's try it with the exact same data. But this time, let's split it into three columns. We want three columns with three characters each. Again, three columns with three characters each. Again, very easy to do with text to columns using fixed width. So once again, we highlight all of these cells here, go to the data tab, go to the text to columns button, and once again, we press fixed width, like so. Click on next, and then once again, we create our break lines. Just like what we said a while ago, we want three columns with three characters each. So let's create the first break line here, we put it between the third and the fourth column, like so. And then we click again to create another break line, like so. And this break line is put between the sixth uh, character and the seventh character, like so. So we create three uh, columns with three characters each. Once again, we press next. We select our destination to be here. Press enter. And then we click finish. So let's arrange the data so it's easier to see the columns. So once again, in this case, just like what we mentioned a while ago, we created, we split this data of nine characters each into three columns of three characters each. Once again, very easy to do with text to columns. Some of you who were here during our previous lesson, which are the text cutting functions of Microsoft Excel, uh, left, right, mid, and the len functions, some of you may be wondering, um, do I need text to columns if I already know the text cutting uh, functions, the left, right, mid, and the len functions? Or some of you who uh, who really, really like the text to column uh, feature of Microsoft Excel, some of you may be wondering, if I know text to columns, do I really need the text cutting functions? If I know how to do text to columns, do I really need to do left, right, mid, and len? My answer to that is, it's useful to know both because both 
the text cutting functions and the text to columns feature, they're both useful in their specific needs or situations. The text cutting functions such as left, right, mid, and the len functions, they're very useful because they are functions. So therefore, because they're functions, they can already uh, set how you're going to process data before you even receive the data. Because once again, they're functions. On the other hand, the text to columns uh, feature is a feature, it's a command of Microsoft Excel. So you only use it, you use it to process data that you already have. Sometimes you don't need to do left, right, mid, and len for data, especially when you're going to process it just once. So if you're going to process data just once and the data is something you already have on hand, then the text to columns feature is what you're going to use. Now, here comes the fun part. Let's talk about some practical applications of the text to columns function, especially for my fellow teachers. Now on the first column of the sample data that you see on the screen, once again, we have here our fictional student names. And these names are uh, formatted based on uh, first name. And then you have your, uh, sorry, last name first and then followed by a comma space. And then you have your first name and then you have your uh, middle name. Next up, you have here the sample email addresses of these students. So you have here, uh, of course, the address. And then you have here the at symbol, the A with the like that, <laughs> the at symbol, and then the email uh, provider that they're using. And then let's say, for example, that your school is using its very own automated enrollment system. And for those schools who have automated enrollment systems, I think you are you, you know that uh, schools sometimes have their own ID numbers. These ID numbers are different from the, uh, the LRNs provided by uh, the Department of Education. So these are system-generated uh, ID numbers by the schools, assuming that the school has an automated enrollment process. In most cases, uh, automatically generated ID numbers by schools, especially when they are machine-generated, they usually have some sort of pattern. Let's say, for example, that the pattern in this case involves the date of uh, enrollment of the child in the school. So, say for example that the, what, what the machine does or what the computer does uh, in your computerized enrollment system is, it looks at the date wherein the student enrolls in the school uh, it takes the year first, so 2018, and then the month of enrollment, which is June 06, and then the day of enrollment, which is in this case 21, and then uh, the number of students, the 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 number of students uh, who enrolled in that particular day. So what this ID, uh, what this automatically generated ID number uh, says is, this student was enrolled to your school. In the year 2018, during the month of June, because it says 06, during the day of uh, 21, uh, June 21, and then during June 21, 2018, he was the 50th student to enroll during that day. So there are certain patterns to uh, enrollment ID numbers. So let's say, for example, that for your particular school, this is the enrollment, uh, this is the ID pattern. So first thing let's try to do is this. Let's say, for example, you want to be able to separate the email ID of the student. It's going, we're going to look at the second column here. You want to separate the email ID of the student and you also want to record uh, what email provider are students usually using right now. So how many Zoho's? Uh, how many students use Zoho? How many students use Hotmail? How many students use Gmail? And how many students use Yahoo? So you want to be able to separate uh, the ID, the email ID of the student, and you want to be able to separate the email provider. That's very easy to do with uh, text to columns. So let's try that. Uh, let's highlight this column here. Let's highlight all of this data here. These are 200 pieces of data. If you're going to do this manually, it's going to take you time because this is 200 pieces of data, but this will only take seconds with text to columns. So look at what the data looks like. You will see, of course, that the email ID of the student and the email provider is separated by the at symbol. So you can use that, that as a basis to separate the data into two columns. So I think you already know, uh, if you were paying attention a while ago, you already have an idea how to do this. You use text to columns here and then you use the at symbol as the delimiter. So let's do that. 
let's highlight these uh, cells here that column and then we once again press the text to columns button uh, on the data tab text to columns once again we want to pick delimited and then in this case we don't want to separate them by comma or space we want to separate them by another uh, character and in this case we want to use the at symbol once again the at symbol is the symbol that you see when you look at what's above the number two uh, key on your keyboard so that is how microsoft excel now is uh, separating the data and then we press next we want the destination to be put here and then let's click on finish so once we click on finish you will now see very very easily microsoft excel has now split the email id of each student and the email provider used by each student once again very easy to do with uh, the delimiter function of text to columns. So let's say uh, we're done with that data. So we've transferred the data to somewhere else. So let's remove the data here so that we don't get confused with our next steps. So say for example, uh, we want to find out the date of enrollment of each and every student. But because we don't have the actual date of enrollment data of the students, we instead looked for the enrollment ID numbers or the, the ID numbers, the school ID numbers of each student. Because we already know that the school ID numbers of each student already reflects their enrollment, uh, their enrollment uh, date. Because we already know, uh, just like what we stated a while ago, that for example, the first four numbers represent the date of enrollment, the next two numbers represent the uh, month of enrollment, and the next two numbers represents, represent the day of enrollment. So, to easily derive this data, we can simply use uh, the text to columns function using fixed width. So, let's try that. Let's highlight these cells here. Let's highlight all of those cells. And then, we press on text to columns, just like what we already uh, uh, discussed a while ago. And then we click on fixed with like this. Now, in this case, once again, we take the first four characters as the year. The next two characters, uh, you can see how I'm doing it on screen. The next two characters as the month. And then the next two characters as the day. And this is their enrollment order for that particular day. And then we click on next. We want our data to be placed here and then we click on finish. So you will see here now, this is the year that the students enrolled. This is the month that these students enrolled. And this is the day that these students enrolled. We don't need this data here, so let's remove that. And now let's format them into proper dates. So with the concatenation feature, if you remember one of our first lessons, the ampersand, so let's create dates of enrollment. So uh, this here, and then the ampersand, then we want a slash between the data, ampersand, day, ampersand, uh, another slash, and then uh, another ampersand, and then the year. Is that correct? Yes, let's press enter. And then you have the proper date of enrollment of each student very easily. So let's uh, copy that, paste that all the way down there. And now you have the data that you need. From the text to columns function, uh, using the text to columns function, you converted uh, the sample ID numbers of each student into their proper date of enrollment. So let's say, for example, you've already copy pasted all of this data somewhere else, so we don't need this data anymore. So let's remove the data so that it doesn't confuse us from our next step. Let's say our next step is we need to convert the full names of students from uh, last name, first name, middle name into first name, middle initial, and then last name. Again, the, the formatting here is last name, first name, and then middle name. Let's say, for example, we need to convert this into first name first, and then middle initial, not middle name, middle initial, and then last name. We can very easily do that step. Instead of having to um, encode all of the names once again, we can very easily do that step with text to columns. First of all, let's inspect the data. You will see that uh, as far as the data is concerned, you have here our last name, and then the last name is separated from the rest of the name by a comma over here, a comma. 
and then the names themselves are separated from each other by spaces. So we can use both the comma and the space as a basis for uh, splitting the cells. In other words, as delimiters. So let's highlight all of these cells here. 200 names. Imagine if you had to encode this manually. So 200 names or 200, yeah, 200 cells and then press on data and then text to columns. We want to choose the delimited file type and then press next. So once again, we click on comma and space because that is how uh, the data is split apart. Press next. And then we want the destination of our result to be here on this cell, $B$1. Once we press finish, you will now notice that uh, you have now successfully split the last name. These are the two first names. And then this is the middle name. Next step. Please note that we don't want the full middle name. We want just the middle initial. So in other words, we want to remove the first, uh, we want to split rather, the first letter of uh, each uh, middle name. We want to split the first letter from the rest of the letters of each middle name. So we can do that once again with text to columns. So we can highlight all of these cells here and then press uh, text to columns over here. And then this case, we want fixed with. Press next. We want to create a break line from just the first letter, just like what you can see on the screen. So we press next, and then uh, you will notice that you are splitting it into two columns. Uh, one column having just the first letter, the next having all of the rest of the letters. And then we want the destination here on $F$1. We press finish. So you will now notice, of course, that you split just the first letter from the rest of the names. Now that we have all of this data, let's do a bit of clean up. We don't need, these are the full middle names. We don't need these anymore. So let's uh, delete this. And then this is the rest of the middle names without the, uh, without the first letter. So we can safely delete that. These are the first names. So we can keep that there. This is the uh, middle initial. So we can move that here. And then this is the last name, so we can move that here. And now we have them on the correct order. Using the ampersand, using concatenation, we can simply input the formula, uh, this cell, ampersand, let's put in a space, ampersand this cell, and then ampersand another space, ampersand uh, this cell here, the middle initial. And then after the middle initial, of course, it needs a period, so period, space, uh, quotation mark, ampersand, and then the last name. When we press enter, whoops, error. Oh, we forgot the ampersand after that. So another ampersand there. So when we press enter, now we have exactly what we need. The first name, the middle initial, and then the period, and then the last name. So we copy the formula there and then paste it all the way down here. And then we will have in you know in mere seconds in or yeah, in mere seconds you now have from this formatting into this formatting once again very very easy to do with knowledge of the text to columns for text to columns feature of microsoft excel and using concatenation using the ampersand i hope during this lesson you realize the power and the convenience of the text to columns function of microsoft excel I invite you to please try it out for yourself. Try it out with sample data. Try it out uh, with uh, numerous steps. But then, of course, if you make a mistake, if you do not like the result, simply Control Z, simply undo, and then try again. This is one of the features of Microsoft Excel that needs a bit of practice. But once you know how it works, and once you've figured out when it should be used and when it should not be used, it will really, really help you, especially when you are trying to format data, arranging data, uh, data for grades, data for your surveys, data for your uh, for your postgraduate uh, uh, postgraduate uh, pa research papers, you know things like that. Very, very easy to do with a text to columns function, a feature of Microsoft Excel. So that's it for the text to columns feature of Microsoft Excel. Once again, I am Carlo, and this is Carlo Excels. Thank you very much for watching.